Hi guys, and today I'll be playing The Forest Deep. They say the scarlet leaves of autumn hold many secrets. If you listen close enough, you can almost hear the canopy of mysteries they try to desperately to convey before they wither in the rinser with secrets left untold. If only that were truly the case, but it's so just so prose. The dying leaves and autumn trees cannot tell us where the missing have been stolen away. If they could, perhaps the long path through the polar forest, once walked by many travelers and merchants, not have been abandoned out of fear. The forest is stealing people away, they say, as if they never existed. So the people, as people do, took the grief instead of hope. Even the renowned young knight who went to the forest to find those who had gone missing became just another vanished person. Any remaining hope dwindled. When the news spread that the knight had not returned, I was the one only one willing to go into the supposedly cursed forest and find them. This is quite possibly the stupidest idea I've ever had. I shouldn't be here. Every bone in my body seems to freeze as I approach the forest. My instincts tell me to turn around and to get as far away from this place as possible. I can feel some sort of awful magic emanating from beyond the trees, and yet despite my better judgement, I know I just can't leave. I just have to find him. People in the town told me he went in just a few days ago. Even if he isn't here, he cannot have gone far, and I'll be able to track him. Goodness, of course that fool will go into this terribly eerie forest by himself, looking for everyone. I wonder if he even remembered to wear his armor. He knows he's known far and wide for saving people, but the one thing the bards won't sing of is just how foolhardy he can be. Then again, I suppose, I'm one to talk. Not only am I alone, but the sun's already down. Still, I don't think I have the luxury of waiting until tomorrow. Sneaking out was just hard enough. No turning back then. If it means finding my brother, I'll just have to be a fool. Stealing my resolve, I take the first step into the forest. The chill and the wind is my only welcome. The further I venture into this forest, the stranger it seems. Can't tell how far I've gone because everything around me looks exactly the same as it did 30 minutes ago. And yet every time I look behind me, I haven't seen the entrance to the forest. I certainly made progress, but I've also certainly passed this exact broken tree at least three times now. I don't dare to fully turn around, or I might forget which way is which. There's strange magic at work here for sure, but I can't tell exactly what's going on just yet. I need more information. All I know right now is that there's nothing around me, no sound at all. I can't tell if that's a good or bad thing, given just how quiet it is. Normally, you will hear the scurrying of animals or maybe an owl in the night, but there's nothing. Even the wind doesn't seem to rustle the leaves on the trees. But still, I'm only comforted by the sound of autumn leaves crunching under my boots that's more than welcome among the silence until the same sound comes from behind me. Who's there? Show yourself. I whip my body around to face the potential threat. Only to be greeted by two strangers, now shielding their eyes from my lantern in their faces. When did these two get behind me? I should have heard them sooner. Everything else is so quiet after all. Did they sneak out from the trees or something? They could have been trying to ambush me, but they certainly aren't dressed like brigands. Not to mention no weapons on their person. That I can see anyways. Though I'm trying to decide how afraid I should be of the strangers in front of me, the dark haired one laughs awkwardly. Ah oh goodness, do we mean the star at least so badly? We're just a tad lost, and you're the only person we've seen in a while. I like them up and down, still examine me for anything suspicious. Something about them seems off, but I can't put my finger on it. There's already a strange sense of magic in this forest, so maybe it's just my imagination, but I sense something from these two. I just can't tell what exactly it is. Do you think you could help us? Maybe these are some of the missing people? I don't recognize them. 
but I haven't been as talented in many years. They could just be travelers. Hmm. Um, hello? I step back to reality, hearing the stranger address me again. I realize I haven't said anything. Has it really been so long that I've forgotten how to talk to strangers? Probably you seem just as suspicious as them right now. Huh? Oh, right. I'm sorry. What did you say your names were? He didn't, but since you ask... The stranger chuckles and gives a small bow. Judas, Judas, a pleasure. This is my little sibling, Ellie. I do apologize, though. They're a bit quiet. The more nervous of the duo, Ellie, just gives an awkward wave. They look like they want to say something, but they don't. And you are? Ellie tilts her head as if asking me the same question. I could have told them once, one, once, once over. They don't appear dangerous, but something's still off. Being polite couldn't hurt, though, right? Ah, I'm rude. Well met. My apologies for not answering you sooner. I'm just a bit on edge. Ah, I see. Yes, this forest does, uh well at putting you on edge, doesn't it? Well, rest assured, we are likely in more danger approaching you than you are, are of us. We, um, we lost our lanterns and our supplies out in the forest. Yes, yeah, something came after us when we were setting up camp, an animal of some sort. We had no choice but to abandon our supplies. We got away, clearly, but we ended up getting lost. Oh goodness, something came after you? Do you know what exactly it was? I haven't heard of many wolves or bear attacks in this forest. Now that I think about it, the only danger in this forest I've ever heard of have been from whatever is causing people to disappear. Not sure. Not everyone's got a good look, but it certainly wasn't a person. That aside, I don't suppose we could stick to you for a bit. The two of us are less concerned about our supplies, and more concerned with just getting back to town. You're carrying the only light stores around for, well, potentially miles. I suppose that's fine, if you don't mind walking all night. I'm not exactly going back to town for a while, and it's kind of a long way. Fine with me. I don't think either of us can sleep very well tonight anyways. Ellie nods, so I shrug. They seem harmless enough for now, Now I'm not one to leave two strangers wandering in the dark. If things go south, south I could just defend more than defend myself. I'm no knight, but magic hasn't failed me yet. The three of us walked together, further down the forest path. I made sure not to let them, uh, left them behind me, keeping pace with them at least at my sides. Perhaps it's paranoia, but I can't shake this strange feeling about them. It's better to play it safe, keep them in my peripheral vision. I make a note not to tell them about how the forest seems to be looping just yet. Even with this as discreetly as possible, will ensure the least amount of problems for me when I go home. However, now I have two strangers next to me to pay attention to as well as to keep for clues. Speaking of said strangers, the silence between us doesn't stretch more than a few minutes before Judas starts asking me questions. So, we're passing through this way, but what about you? Are you a traveler as well? Oh well, I'm looking for someone. My brother. Maybe he could have helped me, actually. He's a young knight, quite tall, with a very freckled face. Oh, and he has a, um, strange tattoo on his shoulder. Quite intricate and hard to miss. Ellie and Judas look at each other for a moment, perhaps in confusion. Ellie looks nervous, but they haven't stopped looking nervous since I first saw them. We haven't seen anyone like that, no. You're the first person we've seen in a while. That's odd. It's quite difficult to miss. I wonder if he's no longer here, but then... Where would he be? No one at all? That's odd. A lot of people have gone missing around here, so I thought maybe you at least seen one of them? Then again, I suppose they're called missing for a reason. Wait, really? Well, that's concerning. If we had known that, we wouldn't have come here. You haven't heard? At least 12 locals have gone missing here recently, as well as many travelers who came this way and haven't been seen since. That's not even mentioning who I'm looking for. The people in this town should have warned you. Ah, oh, we didn't know. We really, we didn't really talk to the locals in the town. Not at all. Knowing the people from my hometown, they never let strangers walk off without no direction, especially into a forest that's become notorious for vanishing people. You have a hard time avoiding people who are not. I should know. Maybe things have changed since I've been gone. 
Okay, well, did anything weird happen before you entered or even while you've been here? I would have been chased by a strange creature, no? About that, are you sure you can't tell me anything about it? Lights, strange noises, even a weird scent, anything that comes to mind? Um, I think I saw... No, nothing at all. It was dark. Well, he was quite quick to cut Ellie off. These two might know more than they're letting on. At best, it was a little rude, and at worst, it was deliberate. It was probably some sort of over overgrown wolf. It didn't seem magical or anything. Besides, we already got away from it. I don't know. Don't wolves usually come in packs? I think we... Oh, stared at her. She just shoots a cold glare at Ellie, who seems to choke on her words as they avert their gaze. How subtle. At least I have my answer. Not only was that rude, he's almost certainly making Ellie hide something. I need to find out just what that is. Well, nearly I have the, don't have the time or energy to dance around it. Try your best not to let that growing frustration show. I'd rather this be easy. I need all the information I can get and what's going on to ensure all of our safeties. So I'd like to hear what you have to say, Ellie. She just sighs, but he's not contesting. So, Ellie, you were saying? Wait, don't move. She just stops all of us looking around. Without confused, I start inspecting my surroundings, making sure to be deathly quiet. As I listen, a strange chirping noise reverberates through the forest. If it's an animal, it's not one I've ever heard of. The sound almost seems to distort as it echoes. From the corner of my eyes, a shadow flickers beyond the trees. It's so fast, the autumn leaves rustle in the force of a stride. The sound seems to be coming from... It's strange. A presence so familiar, yet like nothing I've ever sensed. My entire body runs cold and chill. His energy is so dark. My throat is so tight. I am being choked. This certainly isn't another mage. I'm not even sure this is a person. All I can tell is that it seems to be circling us, from the way the shadow darts back and forth between the trees. The second Judas spots it, his entire body goes rigid. Judas grabs Ellie's wrist rather forcefully and begins to run ahead of me with them in tow. I don't move, however. This might be exactly what's trapping me a scare, and if I don't know what it, if I know what it is, I'll know how to deal with it. Most I can catch are glimpses of a silhouette through the trees. Slightly hunched, but definitely on two legs. It's hard to make out details in the darkness, even with the lantern. That familiar feeling strikes me again whenever I look at whoever or whatever it is. It couldn't be though, right? Atlas, is that you? The figure stops, turning face toward, towards me. I can make out two large white eyes fixed on me. The shadow of the figure just stands and stares through me. The chill runs up my spine. I run too, but my legs won't listen. Countless whispers, from voices I've never heard before, flood into my mind. Their words blend together. So I was completely in good mood and completely overwhelming. I'm set down my fear by someone taking my hand. Good, please, we can't stay here. I like pulls my hand, I'm trying to need to run with them. I don't stop them. Something tells me that I can't fight this thing head on. Ahead, I see Judas looking over his shoulder, but still running. As we run, I hear leaves scattering. The shadow disappears from behind the trees. I hear it behind me, as if in the back of my mind. Finally, throwing a spell behind me in fear, I kept running, hoping to at least distract the creature or mobilize it for a bit. Thankfully, we seemed to get away. I didn't know how, given how fast the shadow was, but maybe my spell helped. We were able to rest at least, and as far as any of us can tell, we're no longer being pursued. As I catch my breath, I stare at Judas. I'm quite certain you couldn't mistake what you saw for a wolf. What's really going on? Of course, I think that Judas can't answer me because he's catching his breath, so I wait. Then I get a better look at his face. Judas doesn't seem to be listening to me. Looking like he might snap at any moment, he's staring at his hands, gritting his teeth. Ellie takes a few steps back. That damn thing. How long is it going to follow us? How vengeful can a half-dead soul be? What did you do? Ellie covers her mouth in shock. 
They shake their heads as if telling me to stop, but maybe it's telling Judas. Answer me. That creature used to be a person, didn't it? What did you do? Judas snaps his head towards me, gritting his teeth like an animal ready to strike. I ready to spell my hand, prepared to strike back at any moment. The magic in my hand is volatile as many emotions surge through me at once. I've never seen them in person magically twist that like that creature. It did nothing more than a shadow. For someone to be able to do that to another person, it shouldn't be possible. I can't imagine such horrible magic. I can't imagine such cruelty. Instead of the attack that I was expecting, however, he breathed a deep sigh, brushing some of the hair out of his face. His tone goes flat and cold. No, this is perfect, isn't it? After all, I sense a lot of power in that little spell of yours. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Ellie, why don't you tell them? After all, you know exactly why we're here, don't you? Uh, I... I... Ellie takes a step back from the both of us. She is just sighs. The spell my hand sparks, barely held together in my frustration. You're coming with me. No answer to a higher authority for what you've done. I wouldn't have had to drag you out of here myself. Oh, that's cute. So sorry to ruin your plans, but there will be no fighting between us. Don't make me repeat myself. No one has to take the fight if I must. Don't you believe me? I'm telling you the truth. You don't need to fight. Look into my eyes and you see just how sincere I am. You're... Oh no. My entire body freezes, paralyzed where I stand. I can't even move my mouth to speak. If this is my normal spell, I would have countered it, but it doesn't feel normal in the slightest. My mind is racing, trying to think of what to do. What exactly is he? Certainly no average mage. The spell I prepare my free hand fizzes out with nowhere to go. By the spell's race, the purity must run in your family. What a shame. I sense such immense power for you, little mage. Thankfully, it won't be wasted on you much longer. It runs in my family, and that means... Oh god, he means Atlas, doesn't he? Atlas probably tried to stop the end. She just turns to Ellie once again, who's refusing to look at anyone. Are you just going to stand there, Ellie? Or are you perhaps so absent-minded that you forgot the reason we came here? No, no, I haven't forgotten, I just... Ellie struggles to speak, stuttering nervously. I don't think he wants to be a part of this. She just rolls his eyes in response. We don't have time for this. Just remind me not to expect anything from you in the future. But just as but as I'm such a good big brother, I'll help you just this once. Watch closely so I don't have to hold your hand next time, Ellie. After all, the demon prince can't be called forever, now can they? There is this is so much worse than I thought. Even if I wasn't bound by his spell, this is dangerous. If they're really if they're really demon princes, there will be no trace of me to find. That must be what happened to Atlas. I did my best to struggle with the magic to no avail. Come now, quit making such a face. It doesn't have to be like that. After all, it's such a lovely night, wouldn't you agree? You surely couldn't have happened upon a better night to be your last. She just laughs and reaches her hand out towards me, grabbing my face, forcing me to make eye contact. I try to look away and close my eyes in hopes that the spell won't affect me that way, but I have no control. I can't even scream. There's a bit of a sting in the back of my mind, like pricking my finger on a needle repeatedly. The world around me starts to blur, and I can only see his eerily glowing eyes. Don't worry. As long as you don't try anything stupid, this won't hurt this won't hurt a bit, and it'll be all over soon. I'm even being so kind as to fully numb your senses. I'm sure you figured that out by now, being such a smart mage. She just laughs. There's a haze fog in my mind, and I can't seem to break out of it. Any thoughts I have, they're drowned out by his words, and gradually I begin to lose myself. Every word he speaks seems to echo in my mind, drowning out my inner voice. It's like I'm slipping away. See, Ellie, this isn't difficult. I've already done the hard work of blinding them. All you have to do is finish your job. She just shoves me away so roughly, knocked me over, if she didn't grab my shoulder to stabilize me. My world spins even after he catches me, as if I might drift from my own body. See? They can't even stop themselves from falling. No threat at all. You bind them, numb their mind and senses, and soon enough we can't do anything to stop you. 
I'm sure you, you can do this with ease someday, dear sibling. Enough of that, though. It's time for you to finally become a proper demon prince. What does that mean? What are they planning? I panic at the implications, trying desperately to think of something I can cast to get myself out of this mess, but any spell I can think of requires me to move. Is there a problem? Oh no, I just... This feels really wrong. By the gods, you're still on that? Who discussed this? You think like a mortal. The only concepts such as right or wrong are simply not applicable to us. There is no circumventing thousands of years of tradition, and there is no other way to fully regain your powers. End of story. I know, it's just, what if I didn't? What if I just stayed as I am? Please tell me if you're joking. Well, I already can't cast some spells. I don't see the need in hurting someone to become stronger. Damn it, Ellie. It's not just about magic. You know how important this is. You've been putting it off so long. If we go home empty-handed now, our fathers won't put the blame on me. Who knows what punishments they put me through? Do you really want me to do that? Do you really want to do that to me? No. I never want to cause you any trouble, but we stop wasting time. I can't feel anything. Not even the sensation of Ellie grasp in my hand. All I know is I can hear the blade of their breast shake. I see the nervousness look uh, nervous on their looks on their face, and they make eye contact with me. I brace myself for death or whatever twisted magic they may cast, hoping that sense of lost all sensation in my body that it won't hurt. At least stares into my eyes, but theirs don't glow the same way Jules's does. All I can do is stare back into their wavering gaze with fear. After a moment, Ellie breaks away and shakes her head quickly. Jesus, I can't. I can't do this. Please, please let's just go home. I'm sure our fathers will understand. I'll tell them that it was my fault. Just don't make me do this, please. You are always such an idiot. What? Is there going to see another demonstration, dear sibling? Ah! She just shoves Ellie away and twists the ground with a thud. I want to take this opportunity to get away, but it's like I'm watching the world through someone else's eyes. I can't make any moves to influence it. All I can do is watch, like a ghost with no body, detached. She just clutches both of my shoulders with his hands, glowing eyes staring through mine. I could have done this the easy way, but this will have to do. Sensation returns to my body all at once, but in the worst way imaginable. Every nerve in my body lights up in pain. I feel Jesus' sharp nails, almost claw like digging into my shoulders through my toes. Pain radiating through me, it's sharp and slow, like being ripped away from myself. It's so horrible, I to scream, lash out, but I can't move. By now, it's far too late for me to do anything. He's draining my soul from me. Stop, please, you don't have to do this, Judas. Just let them go. If you want to reject your nature, so be it. Now I'm making up for your mistakes. I will be strong enough for the both of us. You can continue living in shame. Won't that be nice? Maybe I can even keep you from being a total outcast provided you stand in my way. If I could scream, I will be wailing. Pain intensifies with every moment. And in the corner of my eye, I can see Ellie panicking near me screaming. You're going to kill them. Don't be stupid, Ellie. That's a given. Who exists to die and be consumed? Watch as Ellie tries to pry one of the Jews' arms off of me. Please, please stop. I don't want this. Guys, but you shut up already. You make it so hard to focus. I really made a monumental mistake tonight, so at least be useful by staying out of this. No. No, I told you to stop. Even some kind of spell, Ellie pushes Judas back and stands between us. Judas' spell on me isn't entirely broken, but it's interrupted, interrupted just enough for me to move. When I breathe the only scream escapes me and I fall to my knees, a lantern falls as well, shadow on the ground below. Moon! Judas scratches his face in pain. As wrapping the spell must have hurt him as well. Ugh, just how stupid do you have to be, Ellie? Time and time again, you prove to be the shame of this family. I'm giving you one last chance. Do something right for once and step aside. Only flinches, but they don't move away, glaring at Jews as I try to reorientate myself. 
This looks like it's going to be a fight. I need to stand. My patience is wearing thin. I won't ask you again. I don't want to fight you. We can still leave. Ellie's voice falters. Their hands are shaking at their side. What a shame. In a sudden motion, Drew strikes at Ellie with his claws. He barely dodged, and I'm left with moments to react as well, but I'm just able to roll out of the way out of the fight. It seems I'm slowly regaining control of my body, but with that comes immense pain that I'm removing in every room. I managed to pull myself to my feet to spite it. Boom, get out of here! Ellie is barely keeping up with Dr. Drew's attacks, but they aren't fighting back. It's only a matter of time before they're going to- before they're hit. I have to do something. I'm not letting someone sacrifice themselves for me. The spell will hit Ellie too easily. Instead, I grab a sharp rock from the ground and take aim. Hey, Judas. My voice is still weak, but I grab his attention just long enough to throw the rock straight at him. It's a little off kilter. It doesn't do much, but it's a great distraction. In that free opportunity, Ellie's hands glow bright with magic. They throw the hands over Judas's eyes from behind him. Ah! I'm sorry. Ellie pulls back, and Judas doubles over, holding his eyes. You brat. You brat. Judas violently strikes all around him in his paws, while Ellie rushes to take my hand. Come on, come on. Grasping my hand tightly, Ellie pulls me along to run while we have a chance. For a moment, I'm not sure if my body can take it, but frankly, there's not much choice. Even if I think I'm going to collapse, I have to keep going. As the two of us run, a horrifying scream of rage echoes from behind us. Get back here. I'll kill you. I'll kill you both. My world is practically spinning, but my legs don't stop, as I'm pulled forward by Ellie faster than I could normally run. I don't look behind me. I can't bring myself too. Listen at Jerusalem's screams fade behind us, nothing but a distant sound in the forest. We keep running, and the further we go, the more pain I feel. It's becoming unbearable. Perhaps it was how far we'd run or the after effects of the spell, but I feel like I might collapse. I wheeze, trying to get out, bit the words out. Ellie, wait. Ah, Ellie merely jumps in my voice, but slows to a stop. I'm so sorry, I wasn't paying attention. You must be exhausted. Let's rest for a moment. We should be safe for a bit. Let's hope so. I lean against a tree to catch my breath as Ellie starts pacing back and forth. They're muttering to themselves. Sounding like they're about to cry. What? What have I done? I can't go home now. Judas will, will kill me. I can do nothing, though. Ah, oh, that was so stupid. I'm so stupid. I want to calm them, but I find myself growing very weak. Actually, maybe it is a weakness. I'm losing feeling completely. I'm like earlier, I can still move, and I'm finding myself unable to stand. I start to slump against the tree. As I try to speak again, but only make a small sound, Ellie turns to me. Her eyes are wide in shock. Oh, oh my, I'm sorry. Are you alright? Let me help you. It might sound strange coming from a demon, but healing is my strong suit. Ellie approaches me, reaching out their hands to me, as her hand gently brushes the sides of my head. Not the familiar ting of magic, but this time not of a sinister nature. Judas' magic felt like mist and fog, the feeling of being lost and afraid. Ellie's magic feels more like running water in a creek, or gentle rain on the window. I am in a lot less pain, by the way, and I'm able to stay on my feet. Thank you. I don't fully understand the situation, but you saved me regardless. What? No, I'm, I'm one of the people who put you in danger in the first place. Please, don't thank me. I take a deep breath and center myself. I stand upright, and though I'm still supporting myself in the tree. Ellie may be helping cure me of Judas' spell, but that doesn't change the fact that we sprinted for quite a distance. Ellie, like I said, I, I don't fully understand the situation. I'm just looking at it from the outside. Well, perhaps it's somewhat from the inside, seeing as I was involved in what just happened very directly. My point is that he could have killed me. Sounded like that might have been an easier option for you. Still, you chose to save me. For that, you have my thanks. Moon. Mm. I need to tell you the truth about all of this. I actually know what happened to your brother. Or rather, what happened to all the missing people. 
that if what happened with Judas just now is any indicator, I believe I can figure out what you're going to tell me. Well, yes, but there's something you should know. As you probably figured out, Judas took all their souls except for one person. He just barely escaped. No, so he's alive? I don't know for sure. Judas was almost done, you know? The tattoo on your brother's shoulder started glowing. It interrupted the spell and he ran. Seeing how frustrated Judas was at searching after searching the forest, pretty likely he got away. I got separated looking for him, so I don't know if he's okay or why Judas gave up searching. Be sure to be here, though. Judas made me surround the forest with a spell that distorts the area so no one can leave. It centers on me, though, and once I leave, the spell will break, so we'll be okay at least. Goodness, I gave him that tattoo years ago. It's a protection rune I made, but I never thought I'd be powerful enough to stop a spell like that one. I, I don't want to get your hopes up, but I thought you should know. Judas's magic is very powerful, there's no guarantee. Honestly, it's amazing that you're coherent right now, even with healing. I'm surprised too, it was not an experience I wish on my worst enemy. I mean, even knowing that Alex might be alive, I'm in no condition to find him. Not to mention that shadow creature. If that got to him, who knows if there's any trace of, of him to find. Ellie nods sympath sympathetically. Right, I wish I could tell you more about the shadow, but I don't know anything. I think Juice knows something, but he wouldn't talk about it. Even he seems scared of it though. Ellie trails off, gazing directly into my eyes as, big as if examining them. Um, what? Your eyes. They aren't going back to normal. Is there something wrong with my eyes? Please don't be alarmed, but they, um, lost their color. I've seen what Juice does to do a couple of times. The eyes always lose color before death. You're still alive, so you still have your soul, but your eyes aren't going back to normal. That sounds very bad. To be honest, I'm not sure what it means. Other than your brother, who ran off immediately, I've never even heard of someone surviving past the first stage of the spell Juice used. It shouldn't have been possible. I have no idea what will happen to you from here. Well, goodness, that's reassuring. Still, I suppose that's it's not all that bad. I am a mage. I suppose I could study this how how this affects me and write it down. Probably be some groundbreaking research if I'm the first person to survive this. Ellie gives a nervous chuckle as if imagining it. Oh surely, great mage. But we have to get out of this forest first. Good point. I should be able to walk, but as for running, well, I may need a few more minutes. Walking is fine for now. I don't sound Judas nearby. Is it too much to hope that he went home? Perhaps, but let's go before we find out. The two of us continue down the path, Ellie making sure not to leave me behind by walking at my side. I mean, no, I'm not walking as fast as I'd like, but after a near-death experience, I'm glad to be walking at all. The good thing about walking slowly, whether by choosing to or not, is that I can study my surroundings more easily. You have to make sure Drews and the creature aren't following, but part of me hopes Atlas appears somewhere in those trees. Ellie is also looking over their shoulder, but not the same way I am. They look afraid, like something's going to jump out the second they look away. Hey, are you doing alright? Ellie nearly jumps out of her own skin before giving a shaky laugh. Uh, as well as I can be, considering. Right, well. You want to at least talk about it? Knowing the silence might help you feel a little less on edge. Ellie nods, anxiously fidgeting with her hands. I'm just, I don't know what we'll do from here. I can't go home now, and Juice isn't going to let me run away as much as I wish he could. Well, you can come with me. You already know that I'm a mage, but if you believe it, I'm already a, I'm actually a magical prodigy of sorts. You should live in a rather safe magical university. Heavily warded, heavily guarded, all that. I only came out to find my brother. You should come with me. I'm sure it's a lot safer there. And I don't see anything on their enrollment papers bearing demon princess from attending the university. It's a bit of an unusual place to hide, so I doubt Judas would look for you there. I'm sure I can arrange something for you in regards to tuition. I smile, but Ellie shakes their head. I appreciate the offer so much more than you can imagine, but people wouldn't accept me. There probably isn't a rule about demons because it's unprecedented. And if they accepted me, what then? Jews would find me eventually, and he might even bring my father's. My father's got the wrong idea. 
and they thought someone there was holding me hostage. At least shivers. I can imagine where their train of thought is going. I don't know much about demons, but if Ellie is a demon prince, their parents must be powerful demon lords. It's too dangerous to involve anyone in. If Ellie could go somewhere, he would never find me, but I don't know where. Ellie trails off, sighing heavily, but their words stick with me for a moment. Somewhere, you can never find them. Words bounce around my head, and it hits me. I actually do know a place, someone no one ever would guess. If they did somehow guess, they wouldn't even consider it a possibility. The place only known to me. Actually, I do have an idea where it could go. It's going to sound impossible, but please believe that it's a very real option. What is it? Take a deep breath. I haven't revealed my work on this trip to anyone, but I have enough to know what I'm doing. The only thing I'm worried about is having enough power after being attacked earlier. Should be fine, however, if I can manage. I say I've gotten through worse, but I can make a portal that takes me to another world. Ellie's eyes widen, and I don't blame them for being shocked. Portals from another place are extremely difficult to do. Portals from another world are completely unheard of. I managed it before, but isn't that impossible? For a regular portal, you need a whole group of people. Even making a portal from Helion here to, to here took a group of highly trained demons. Well, I'm a secretly magical prodigy for a reason. I mean, I made a portal here on my own. Three hours ago, I was pretty much two countries over. That's, I have to admit, that's impressive. Have you, have you ever been to another world? What's it like? Oh no, I have never gone in person. If I went through my own portal, there'd be some broad problems. Talking about my passion project that I've had to keep secret for so long has me getting excited, or perhaps it's the lingering adrenaline. According to my theories, you have to remain in the world you're casting the spell in. If I went through the portal, then halfway through the spell would be interrupted. With the portal closing and me not fully through it, well, let's just say the result wouldn't be good, not in the slightest. However, sending another person through is a different story, since you're not the one casting the spell. Ah, uh, but as for what it's like, well, I've only seen glimpses of the other world, but it's beautiful. The buildings are strange, though. They're very geometric in nature, and some are quite tall. I once saw one of their cities at night, and there were so many lights. It's like they brought the stars to the ground to light the city. He had magic tools, the likes of which I've never seen, but I couldn't sense any magic at all. I believe it may be a limitation of the portal. It's just so bright and beautiful and strange. Ah, uh, goodness, I'm sorry I'm rambling. I haven't been able to tell anyone this. It's kind of a secret research. That's okay. Sounds amazing, I can barely imagine it. You're sure the portal is safe though, right? Oh, of course. I wouldn't have suggested it if I didn't think it was safe. I'm very capable. You're a demon prince, so you can handle the velocity of the magic with no issue. Not to mention, I went through an apple into a particular portal I made into that world, and it landed completely unharmed. Though someone did get hit on the head with an apple. Now that I think about it, it must be confusing considering she wasn't sitting under an apple tree. Ellie laughs, and it's nice to hear. You seem a lot calmer than earlier. Are you sure it's really okay? Can you handle casting such a big spell right now? Trust me, you saved my life, and I want to save yours. I reach into my pocket and my cloak for a few crystals I packed. Having magical tools are a big help, even though I'm in a bit of a weakened state at the moment. I can do this. It might just be a little bit tougher than usual. And again, I did blow a door clean off his hinges last week at the university, clearly by mistake. And the way some people don't know their own strength, I don't know my own magical capability sometimes. So I'll likely be fine. Hold still real quick. I begin to laying out all the crystals, five in total, so they think they make a sort of large circle around Delhi. It's not the most complicated, but I don't need it to be. I simply need the tools themselves. Is there anything I can do to help with the spell? Hmm, not really. You'll be able to move once I start casting the spell, not until you're on the other side. You won't be able to stop casting the spell once it's started either, or you could be in danger. As long as we work fast, there shouldn't be any trouble. What will you do? Hmm? Well, I'm going to cast a spell. It 
mean after I'm gone? You'll still have to get out of here. You might not have enough energy to make another portal and get yourself back home. Oh, that. I'll be fine. While I might be weak after the spell, that hasn't stopped me before. Besides, I'll be staying here a while longer to find Atlas. Knowing him, there's no way he didn't leave some kind of trace. Alright, I hope you'll be okay, but I'll trust you. Truthfully, I'm not quite sure about this. However, I have to try. I won't let them get killed because they saved my life. Taking a stick from the ground, I began to draw the same sigil I'm used to practicing. Circles around the crystals, lines to connect them, the complicated symbols near Ellie's shoes. I just had to trust myself and trust that all, that all the practice was worth something. But, and I trust that I can properly remember how to execute this without my books. So it's fine. Everything is going to be fine. In fact, when considering this build of research, I've always learned better by practicing, right? I must be catching on and feeling a little nervous because they started looking nervous too. Um, is this enough? It's what enough? These rich crystals and symbols. I know you say you're powerful and I trust you, but is this really enough to make a portal? It looks so complicated when Jesus and I were sent here. Well, not for most people. Crystals are just an emergent power source for me. I have enough magic on my own that I usually don't need many tools. It'll be okay as long as we both stay calm. I promise you'll make it safe to the other side. Are you ready? Everything's in place. Oh, wait, before I go, can... Can you call me Ellis, instead? My real name. I smile, extending my hand out to them. I take it Ellie was some sort of nickname given by their older brother, one they're not particularly fond of, so I'm counting this as their our real meeting. And this is what... And this is when we truly met? I might as well give a proper greeting, no? Ellis takes my hand, and I give them a firm handshake. Or perhaps as firm as I can manage in my current state. Of course, Ellis. It's nice to meet you properly. I'll remember your name. Should we continue? Should we somehow meet again? It's a shame we'll have to part ways so soon. If we met under different circumstances, we could have been great friends. I think so too. I appreciate everything you've been doing for me, regardless. I'm only returning the favor. If I let you die after you saved my life, well, that'd be cruel, wouldn't I? You need a moment? There is no turning back as far as I know. Ellis takes a deep breath, steadying himself. No, I'm ready. Thank you, Rune. I nod to them and begin to spell. May your path lead you to safety. As I begin to spell, the crystals come alight with my magic. I draw power from them as the symbols I drew begin to grow as well. I focus all the energy I have left into this spell, I need to get it perfect. Close my eyes, I visualize the other world. I remember seeing a forest there too, but I had to focus on that to make it easier for myself. Reaching out my hands, I feel the familiar sensation of the spell, and barely touching the surface of cool water and feeling the ripples of sound on my fingertips. Feeling the touch in the boundary of another world never ceases to amaze me. It's both cool and familiar, like a distant dream you swear you've had before. Something doesn't feel right though. I know I'm doing everything right. There's a feeling I don't recognize creeping over my spine. Shattering, I open my eyes without, without even meaning to. Uh oh. I nearly break connection in shock. There's something behind Ellis, and I know they can sense its presence from the fear in its eyes. It's the same shadow I saw through the tree, trees earlier, but it's struggling. It shifts and morphs, something seemingly trying to maintain a humanoid figure. A strange fog permeates the area. Seemingly coming from the creature. Whatever it's trying to do, I'm powerless to stop it, and so is Ellis. Neither of us can move, or risk interrupting the spell. It's dangerous, it's dangerous either way. Just stay calm, Ellis. Breathe. Everything's okay. I'm lying. I have no idea who or what this creature is, and it seems to be trying to get into the portal as well. I can feel a twist of pain in my chest, like the one is tearing through me, but I push through. No, 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 you have to run. Just leave me. It'll be okay. I, I just need a little more time. I'm so dizzy, I can't stop now. But now, though. One long move and the spell could tear Alice apart, but that creature isn't exactly harmless either. The watch of the darkness seems to swell. Take hold of Alice, wrapping around their body and choking them by the neck. I feel its presence taking root in my magic. 
I once felt cold water on my fingertips, and now feel ice so cold it burns through my hands. I struggle to stay conscious against the pain, and I feel my throat tightening like a new trick as well. Am I feeling their pain? It's so heavy. I can barely breathe. I need to hurry and finish the spell before I can get through to the uh, through the portal. The mind is once again in the world, but can't be for a second. It's too late now. Stop it. Stop it. No, I can't let this distract me. I'm almost there. Just a little more time. Hmm. Oh, that's unexpected. As the spell is complete, the crystals shatter all at once as my vision fades to darkness. I can feel a scream tearing my throat as pain sears through my body and I fall to my knees. Wasting my eyes open, I see that Ellis is gone, and so is the creature. Damn it, damn it, no! I followed them. There was nothing I could do. No, no, maybe he didn't survive. It didn't seem like he could keep a consistent form. Probably couldn't have survived crossing into another world. Still, I can't shake this strange feeling. I'm so dizzy. I pick up the crystal shards, placing them into my cloak's pocket with shaking hands. Even though it's a simple motion, I wheeze. It turns into a sputtering cough that I have to force myself through. I guess what did that creature do to me? I feel so weak. Am I crying? There's something dripping from my eyes. No, it doesn't matter. I can't stay here and think about it. I feel like I've been touched by death. I have to get out of here before I collapse. With Ellis gone, I should be able to find the entrance now. I'm sorry, Atlas. Please be safe. What? That's it? Thank you for reading my first project. This story's ending is the beginning of another. The events set in motion were revealed one day in a strange little town. The end. Oh, wow. Okay. That was definitely not the end since, I mean, Maybe the creature, or whatever it is, transfers through person to person, so maybe he's now like a host for the creature, unfortunately. That's my theory, overall. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Bye!